Welcome to our look at Orem, a new take on trick-taking from Pandasaurus Games, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy to check out. Orem comes from designer Shreesh Bat and features artwork from Steve O. Torres. It was just released this year by Pandasaurus, who is currently the game's only publisher. Orem is a trick-taking card game that can be played with three or four players, with games taking half an hour to an hour each. The box lists this as a 7-plus game, which seems about right to us. In Orem, the players are alchemists who have finally figured out the secret of converting common metals into gold. Now it's time to perfect the formula on your own or with a partner. This modern trick-taking game diverts from traditional trick-takers in a number of ways. Uh, the biggest one being you can't ever follow suit. Other changes include earning trump cards for load card plays, those trump cards being displayed on the table and not your hand, scoring only mattering one hand at a time. Fans of traditional trick-taking games are going to have to unlearn what they have learned in order to master Orem. For a look at the rather striking cards in this card game, check out our Orem unboxing video on YouTube. There you'll see the game's small box, its single deck of oddly tall cards split over five suits, a number of gold trump cards, three scoring gems, a first player token, the rule book, and some summary cards. All of this is in a very shiny gold cardboard box insert. Now, the one thing that I think is important to note here that's uh, of all of that is the card size. I have never seen games with this size card. I don't know why any publisher would go to like, let's get a die made for a unique size card. They're weird. Like they're not, they're, they're oddly tall. They're not as skinny as say space base and they're not tarot sized. This isn't really a problem unless you like to sleeve your games. I did some research on this one, and as far as I can tell, there is no current sleeve on the market that fits these cards well. Now, I will call out a positive side of this box is the rule book. This did something I adore that you do not see very often, which is present the full rules for playing with four players, and then another set of full, complete rules for playing the game with three, instead of just listing the changes when you play with less players. Now, this game does a lot of things that are quite different from the trick-taking games you may be used to. So we're going to do a full overview of play, though unlike the rulebook, we'll just cover the four-player rules and then note the changes when you play with less. Yes, sorry, Mo, I'm going to do the thing you hate. <laughs> so to start a game of Orin, you first need to separate the gold cards. These are displayed on the table in reach of everyone sorted by their value. Each player is then handed a zero gold card, which they put face up in front of them. Uh, technically either side because they're two-sided but doesn't matter you then shuffle the rest of the cards these are the base metal cards and you deal out a hand of 12 to each player the remaining two cards in the deck go face up now there are five suits of these cards the the metal cards that are numbered one to ten in each suit players sitting opposite each other are partners and will be trying to get a higher combined score than their opponents during each hand the mm -hmm. first team to win two hands wins the game these wins are tracked by the scoring tokens so no pencil and paper are needed now, each round starts with the start player picking one base metal non-gold card from their hand. Again, the, the gold cards aren't in your hand anyway. So pick a card from their hand, place it on the table in front of them as a bid for how many tricks they think their team will take this round. This continues around the table with the final bid for each team being the highest of the two players in that team. Whoever bid the highest of the two of you, that's your team's bid. The start player then leads any base metal card. The next player then must play a card of a different suit with play continuing with each new card having to come from a different suit than any previously played card. Now the team with the highest plays card takes the trick, but then the player of the lowest card played gets to take a gold card valued at the same value as that low card, if one's available. These gold cards are trump. At any time, instead of playing a base metal card, you can play a gold card from your tableau. If two players do this, the highest gold card takes the trick. The thing is, these gold cards are also worth points. Now, a hand ends immediately when any player can't play a base metal card because they only have cards that match the cards already played, and they have no gold cards, or they choose not to use a gold card. When the round ends, teams total their points. If they beat their bids, they get points equal to that bid, plus the value of gold cards both players have collected. If they perfectly match their bid, they double their points before adding in the gold card value. If they don't hit their bid, they still get points for any gold cards they have. Now the team with the most points wins the round, and as noted earlier, if this is the second win for the team, they win the entire game. No need for scorekeeping cards. 
Now, in addition to using gold cards as trump, there is one other thing you do. At any point in the round, before a trick is started, player can discard a gold card, returning it to the supply on the table, and swap out their bid card for another card in their hand. Now, there's a bit more to it with rules for tiebreakers and the various gold card values, but you should be able to get the idea of it from that. Playing three players is simpler, as there are no partners, your bids are all made at the same time, and the win goes to the first player to win two rounds. If there's a tie and everyone wins one round, the tie goes to the player who made the highest bid in the last round, who successfully hit their bid in the highest round, the last round. Note, this is something that's not in the rules, but was clarified by the designer on Board Game Geek. Now, finally, there are some optional rules for expert players. The first is to remove the zero gold card so that no one starts with any cards in the trump suit. And the second is to total your points each round and the team or player with the most points at the end of three rounds wins. Uh, sorry, the pen and soul and paper are back for scoring if you do use that version. So as you can see, Orum really kind of messes with traditional trick taking. I mean, it, it's definitely different from what most of us expect. Trump cards that are on your table, they're not in your hand. Worrying about what the lowest card you or your partner play if you can't win a trick or possibly losing a trick on purpose just to get a high card out there to be able to take the gold. Bidding for tricks, but then being able to change your bid mid game. And then, well, of course, the whole you can't follow suit thing, which has pretty much messed up every single person I've taught this game to. Even when preparing this review, as we have recently played so many trick-taking games, I was getting confused and needed to be corrected and check the rules. <laughs> yeah. It's really that different than what you're used to in trick-taking. So we first tried Orum 3-player, and it took us quite some time to break the old habits. Uh, Deanna and I in particular were continually playing cards of suits already played, and we often, all of us, all three, forgot we had trump cards because they're not in your hand, they're on the table. And then our first ever play, first time we play the game, our first experience with it gets that three-way tie, and the tiebreaker that's in the rulebook doesn't make sense. The tiebreaker in the rulebook just says whoever bid the most. You don't have to make your bid. So like the last round, you're just going to play down the highest card in your hand just in case you end up tying. And it makes no sense. It just then it's random who wins because you had a better card in your hand. So I'm sorry to say our first impression of this game was not great. Now, while I managed to get the not following suit part right, bidding, tiebreakers, and Trump continued to foil me. Now, the second time we had the game out, after learning about the rule changes from the designer, because I went and contacted them, like, what's going on with this tiebreaker rule? It makes no sense. And it was better. Um, I don't know if we were in a better headspace, whatever, but it did play a lot better. Um, we played a couple different rounds of the game at three-player, and in the end, it's it's a solid three-player game. It, it, it's it's not bad. I, I think both of us, um, Deanna included, would probably rather grab something else if we were expecting like, hey, it's the three of us. What are we doing tonight? But it was okay. It was fine. The problem is it's hard to justify playing a game that's just fine when there are so many great games out there. So while I think we'd move past a negative review of the game, it was still going to be a stretch to say a lot of nice things about it. But then we tried Orum with four, and wow, what a difference playing with a partner makes in this game. This game was clearly designed for four players in two teams, and it shines when played that way. Now, yes, you're still going to have to unlearn some trick-taking traditions, but it is so worth it. It was almost like a different game entirely. All the complaints we had at three players essentially vanished, and it went from meh to marvelous. It's honestly kind of a shame they included the three-player rules, as it hurts the game more than it helps it. Yeah, with four players, this is a very thinky trick taker with a lot going on. It features almost perfect information when compared to other trick taking games, because every card is dealt out every round except for two, and those two are face up. And that is it, it, there for the game. The last hand of the game, if you're a card counter, you know exactly what every, well, at least what the other team has and what your partner has. This means. This game is really going to appeal to the card counters out here. Like, honestly, this would have been my dad's kind of tricky game. He would adore this game and kick our butts. Now, if you're not a card counter, it still can be fun, but you might want to make sure none of you are card counters. <laughs> While not as relaxed and social as some, due to the need to correct some of your instincts, it can still be a fun, easygoing game. Now, while the new mechanics will throw you off at first, I think it's totally worth getting past that, is this is one of the most unique and enjoyable modern trick takers I've played at four players. 
If you dig team-based trick takers like Euchre and bidding card games like Spades, I think you're going to find a lot to like in Orem. And if you're a card counter, you're going to love it even more. If your usual game group is only three people, I can't recommend you just go pick this card game up. Though there aren't a lot of three-player trick takers out there, so you may want to try to find a way to give it a shot. There are actually two different versions available on Tabletop Simulator, a plain version and a lightly scripted version. So give it a go there before you spend any money at three. Now we get to the final group, the players who don't like trick takers. Well, this game takes trick taking and makes it more complicated. So I think in general, it's not gonna win anyone over who's new to trick taking. And I wouldn't think it's a great game to introduce someone who's never played a trick taking game before. Though I'm not sure, cause I played plenty. Maybe this is actually a great place for someone new to it because you won't have those preconceived trick taking traditions in your head that are so wrapped around this game. So that's it for our look at Orem, a trick-taking game where previous knowledge of trick-taking tropes actually gets in the way yeah. of learning how to play this game. Now, what's a game you played that took something you have internalized over the years and turned it on its head? Tell us about it in the comments below. Now, one final thing before we wrap up that this review, and that is to remind you that if you found this review helpful, and if you enjoy the content we put out, it would be awesome if you tipped your bellhop over at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop.